Hello everyone and I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another fantasy match preview. This is for the game between Scotland and Ireland. Both teams are vying for that specific spot and it's going to be a really important game for both of them. So Nikhil bhai is here with me. How do you feel both these teams have done in their first games in the build up to this one? Yes, hello everyone. Hope oh, everyone is doing fine. Scotland began with a bang. Ireland hmm. has had a very terrible time. I don't really see Ireland pulling off stuff unless they their seniors step up. Uh, they lost mm. the warm up to Namibia, uh, not able to chase 139. And uh, in that game that they played, the first game, they never really felt a part of the game. They were always mm. chasing the game from there. So uh, I think lots to work on for Ireland. Again, you can have 100 options, but those 100 options have to deliver. So I think that's mm. the problem with uh, Ireland. Very happy that Scotland, who played just two T20s in the last few years, have come mm. up and shown that how you just have to be that strong mentally and also get enough games behind you that you can come in and perform. So I think uh, both teams in very different space, uh, mental space. I think Scotland mm. should uh, should should do better. Right, their presence of mind in that first game was really good. The game sense when everybody after that first inning still felt that 160 was short with Muncie's knock. But yes, it was a great turnaround. And anyway, on that note, we'll start with our preview for this game. First up, keep in mind that the fan to play depositors leaderboard is open only till 21st October. And the best part being you can see what is the best deposit that has been made. So in, if you are buying for the first rank, you can see on the fan to play app that the best deposit example is 45,000. So you make a deposit a little over that to be able to buy for that rank and so on and so forth for the further ranks. So go ahead and make that best deposit because along with getting that prize, you can also use that cash in contests ahead through the whole World Cup and the Renault car leaderboard that's going to come up ahead. Yes, I think we, we keep saying and we have seen that the games are not made for risk. You can go with them and go with them. Because the teams are also doing that. So now maybe that the plan might be that you base team and then you can take the GL mm. definitely you can take all the risks that you want. And in this case, the deposit data boards are working on your work because this money is getting back in terms of gifts if you are mm. getting good ranks. And if you don't rank any good ranks, you can use this money on this platform where you can use 5 all-rounder in this game. You can use 5 all-rounder if you want to. So that is very important to have an option. Right. All teams have a lot of all-round options. So that keeps a big door open for you. And this game, these two games today are going to be played at Hobart. So you can see, like you can see here, the dimensions similar to Geelong, one side being shorter and then the other side being even. So Nikhil, by any thoughts on what you saw on the first day at Hobart in terms of like the pitch playing up or any specific bounce indications that you saw? Uh, I think the pitches are having something for the bowlers, which is good. Uh, hmm. I don't think it's easy to hit through the line. Uh, now, again, if they have a change, I'm sure they'll have a change of pitch to, uh, for this very game. So, hmm. I will not say read the pitch report, but maybe see the pitch and take your own call because your call is going to be as good as theirs. Uh, so, hmm. that's the expertise that the pitch reports have these days. But I think it'll, it'll still be a good wicket to bat first. Uh, I think that hmm. is going to be the theme in, in this uh, continent country that runs on the board and then you can defend and have lots of wickets in the second half. Right. And we saw Sikandar Raza playing quite a few swats across the line which went all the way to the boundary. So that is something for you to keep in mind that many of these guys are going to try and target those leg side boundaries. Yeah. And which also means that either the spinner is totally in play with a few miscues or totally out of play with the ball out of play. So that is something yeah. that you can try as GL scenarios. Yeah. So let's look at our base team then for this specific game. And we've already prepared the base team and we'll discuss better options for you based on the same. First up in the keeping section, we've gone with Lockin Tucker, who I felt played one shot too many. But with Scotland, Matthew Cross is batting slightly more in the middle order. So, might be a little bit more of a chance to take as they will attack him with Simi Singh and Garrett Delaney. And then in the batting, we have gone with Manzi and Sterling. Now, Nikhil, by any other options that you feel are worth looking at from these two sections? I think Lock and Tucker actually played 10 shots too many. Uh, <laughs> it 
it just looked like he was chasing 275 and not 175 mm. and uh, we saw from the first game as well that it was it was not easy to manufacture shots you had mm. to be in holding your best shape and then play your best game to get anything out of this so uh, but i still think tucker is a much i think both tucker and cross are fairly uh, safer banks if you want to go mm. uh, in terms of they don't Tucker doesn't usually play these many shots, but he did that. Uh, so maybe that was maybe the plan. But yeah. I think they will be tested a lot with Mark Watt. And I'm very interested to see how, uh, you know, they Ireland find a way out for him. Because yeah. Melbourne, Sterling, Tucker, you see, there are a lot of right handers up top, and Mark Watt could really turn the game around again in, in the power play itself. So yeah. that is one matchup that I'm a bit skeptical of. In the batting section, this is the game where I would want to go with just one or zero batters uh, <laughs> because I have, I have absolutely no trust on anyone, any one of this uh, lineup. Because no. I would generally take Tector if he's batting first, but he's not been in great form. Uh, no. But if he still bats first, I might still take a risk on him. Paul Sterling, again, I think batting first, you would assume that he'll do better, but no. so far we haven't seen that. And uh, George Munse, well, it's like the James Valley that uh, it is helping the team get to a score, but it's not making much of an impact. But in fantasy, mm. even that is enough. So that is a risk that you will take. Uh, if they come off, they'll give you a good 40 50. If not, it'll be a single digit. Uh, so here, right. apart from these two, all other options are very similar. So mm. you can really take a call here. Fair enough. So, two things that I'd like to mention here. I feel like whoever is batting first, that will be the safer keeper for you to take because both these keepers are known to play one shot too many under scoreboard pressure. And in the batting section, I feel like if Richie Barrington is batting first, he's a very stable bat, so he's a good option. Then we can look at the next section of the all-rounders. Here we have gone with Curtis Camphor, Simi Singh, Safian Sharif and Michael Lee. So you can see we have not taken too much of risk here because there's no real scope for risk. Every team is just is playing by the book till now and there's no real difference or change that we're seeing. But one guy who I feel is worth looking at here will be Chris Greaves because Ireland have a list of right-handers, which means Michael Lee's overs can get cut and Chris Greaves can also hit the ball down the order. Any other options that you feel would work from your nickel boy? Yeah, I actually had Lisk uh, in the first game as well. I felt he mm. bowl, but he did not, which did cost me, but I'll still back him. Mm. Uh, we saw what he did in the last World Cup as well. And he came yeah, in amazing. and put, mm. had a crucial contribution with the bat as well. So you can never rule out such key uh, contributions here. Uh, mm. The one spot that you can still take a risk on here maybe is Shan Sharif. Uh, mm. I think yes. I would probably prefer him by the bowling first. But again, this tournament has been such that seamers have got help in both innings. So if you feel he'll come good, you can go ahead and back him. Uh, you also have option of Gerard Delaney. Someday he will bowl suddenly, uh, which we don't know when. So uh, you will have you have plenty of options. But as I said, Ireland can have 100 options. They need someone to come through. Uh, Singh also last game it took. I don't really buy, buy how sometimes some people just get wickets out of nowhere. Uh, hmm. So, because Sean Williams kept hitting him, hit him for one six, wanted to hit him for another six, which was not required at that time. So, those small, uh, small margins of error are about cost, which is why we don't take batters. We take all rounders because they give you more potential opportunities. And Simi Singh could bat as well. He batted very low down the order. So, you have plenty of options here. Uh, it's really up to you in terms of how you think the game will happen. Because even in the morning, in the game that's uh, Netherlands are playing against uh, Namibia. Spinner took wicket, Springle took a wicket, Ackerman took a wicket, and Rulio mm. Fandomover took a wicket. So it's really going to be a what you think and just back it. Right, absolutely. And then in the bowlers, we have gone Mark Watt, who's our vice captain, because like we mentioned, Ireland have a line of right handers, so he can play a crucial role. Bradley Wheel who I won't talk much about because, you know, he's great. And the other two picks, Mark Adair and Joshua Little, if he's bowling first, will surely continue to be our captain because he extracted great bounce from the pitch and he's going to bowl at every important phase of the innings. Yes, I think Little makes very much a lot of difference to your size, especially while bowling first. 
bowling second you can still take a risk and say that okay maybe he may not do that much mm. because he yeah. may not bowl in the end overs particularly depending on how the game goes so in that scenario maybe you can reverse or make something like a mark adair your uh, optional uh, vc or c because majority will still come with their standard munse sterling uh, mm. camphor or even somebody else that you know they feel berington is a good option as well there but all those are risky only i think it is better to take risk on guys who are going to bowl four overs for sure and as of now we feel these two should bowl four and there is enough form on their side to uh, back them as well right absolutely and like nikhil bhai mentioned little can make a lot of difference so don't take a chance there and this is what our final team looks like we have gone lock and tucker george munzi and then four all rounders camphor simi singh safian sharif and michael lee keep in mind chris greaves worth considering in this section and in the bowlers mark ward bradley wheel mark adair and joshua little so this is our final team for this specific game and now we have the favorite section that you all wait for where nikhil bhai gives you one dream team pick so over to you Uh, I think we have already discussed Chris Gibbs. I think he was a very, very good differential. He, he is a very good differential to try out. Uh, mm. I have already talked about Hector as well. So really, the picks are actually out for everybody to just make a good combination of. Still, if you want one name, I'll give you one name, and that is Josh Davey Bowling Set. Fair enough. All and I've already covered Chris Gibbs, so it would be unfair of me to say that name again. and uh, on that note we'll end up review for this specific game we hope you enjoyed this one ensure you hit the like button before you leave and thank you so much for tuning in have a great game yes please have a good game guys take care happy winnings